Okay, so we have a lot to discuss here. Y'all might want to tune in for this one. This is a quick discussion, but so much has happened in the last week and even more has happened in the last 24 well, 48 hours. And then even more has happened in the last 24 hours. It has truly been a train wreck for UFC 279. The first part of that train wreck is the fact that it's Hamzat and Nate Diaz. Stylistically, this fight does not even make sense. It, it just doesn't make sense. Nate historically has been beaten by grapplers at the welterweight division. Well, grapplers in general uh, who can control him. And especially he got he had a, a stretch where he was going up to 170 and Roy McDonald just suplexed them all all night, man. And then uh, Dong Hyun Kim, you know, just kind of tossed him around and comes out is both of those guys. But with, you know, devastating knockout power for at least two rounds. And so that was the first thing. Then in the co-main event, we have potentially Tony's last fight in the UFC and he's going up in weight to fight somebody who only has one way of winning, who has been more than fairly successful in being able to pull that off on a regular basis. Really, his his most recent loss was to Hamzat. He he's won a few, he's won a fight since then or a fight or two and uh I think maybe just one fight, but he won a few before the Hamzat fight. So in reality, He's been doing pretty good. And you're going to give Tony, this guy, at a higher weight class, who has a ton of knockout power, who fights so crazy, th this guy could be losing and he could just knock you out out of nowhere. Or the fight could just be kind of at a stalemate. He could just knock you out out of nowhere. Why would you give that fight to Tony, who's coming up from lightweight, when his last fight he was winning or, you know, at least doing better than his previous fights, and then he got knocked out out of nowhere. So that that's just crazy. Luckily, we do have Kevin Holland and Daniel Rodriguez, but I personally, it feels like this fight is the odd duck on this card. This should have been on a on a much better card. It, it should have been his own fight night main event or the opening fight for a, just a, like a way bigger card that's more, uh, more names, more flushed out. You know what I'm saying? But to be the Coco main event on this card is just like crazy. And then the whole thing at the weigh in press conference with everybody fighting, Dana White said, that, you know, they had to cancel the the press conference because between Hamza, Hamza's team and Nate's team, it was over a hundred people, a hundred men. Most of them are fighters or coaches. So they all know how to fight. It's, it, it's dangerous. And they fighting each other and, it, so that's the thing. And then apparently Kevin Holland was in it and a few other fighters. And, you know, Hamza has really fumbled the bag here by missing weight. All of that wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. It would have been something that you definitely can't do again. Right. Like definitely don't ever do that again. But Hamza was, you know, so many people were kind of going back and forth with him. It was setting up some potentially big fights, some good fights. This was good for Kevin. This is good for Paulo potentially in the future just a lot of different interesting things but to not miss i mean but to not make weight to miss weight in almost 10 pounds that's crazy disrespectful you already fighting a lightweight who's coming up in weight who is more than likely going to get handled anyway then you don't make weight to give you to give yourself an even bigger advantage and there are people who are saying that he didn't like miss weight on accident but they're saying that he did it on purpose to have even more of an advantage i don't know how much i believe that because that is just that's just bottom of the barrel um uh, i don't even I, I don't even know what to say to that if that's true but there are reports that there's a health thing that prevented him from making weight look you go on this whole card and you look at last week's card and you look at next week's card Everybody got injuries that prevent them from making weight. That's the name of the game is fighting. People got bum knees, messed up backs, uh, messed up necks, uh, uh, just different things, different ailments and aches and every that's the game. But you signed a contract that you would weigh a certain amount on this night. And 
you know, comes out has kind of fumbled a bag here. One thing is letting a lot of this hype get to your head. There have been several times over the past week where he's been having altercations with other fighters. And it's like, man, what are you doing? You have a, a, a fight coming up and you're trying to fight a middleweight. You're trying to fight Paulo outside of the octagon. You get paid to fight in the cage. Then you're trying to fight this person, that person. Apparently, I don't know who started what, but there's reports that he push kicked Kevin Holland. And then I, look, this whole trying to fight people backstage. I remember uh, during the Gilbert fight, they saw each other doing the way. Uh, no, they were trying to cut weight or something. And he was backstage. Oh, uh, let's fight right now. Uh, let's fight naked. Like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're a savage. You're good. We know that. We we get it. Win the fight. And see, now the UFC kind of fumbled now because they were kind of scooting Nate out the way and making this the, the you know the Hamza show. But at the same time, they also gave Hamza uh, that Gilbert Burns fight, which a lot of people felt like Gilbert really kind of won that one. It felt like they were making a business decision when they gave Hamza that fight. That probably, uh, it was a close fight. It definitely was not a robbery. But, yeah, Hamza probably should have, you know, one loss on his record right now. And they they bet a lot on him. There have been talks about him getting a title shot off of beating Nate Diaz. How do you go from beating Gilbert Burns, regardless of how close I thought it was, or if I think Gilbert should have won at the end of the day, Hamza won. So how do you go from fighting number three welterweight in the world to fighting a, a lightweight coming up in weight? And then you get a title shot if you win. And you mean to tell me you fumble that? There are people who have been in the UFC who will never get a title shot, no matter how long they've been around, no matter how many fights. And you fumble that. That That's crazy. Now, uh, you know, they had pictures of Nate showing when he was at lightweight versus when he was at welterweight welterweight and he was a look he was looking a little bit pudgy and then there was photos i think connor was just tweeting about uh tony ferguson how he looks a little bit pudgy at welterweight so it's like bro you had the advantage man you you had the advantage uh nate is not in the same i don't know if he's in the same shape i don't know how hard he has been training or how serious he took this fight but i know one thing in the actual fight he always tries right uh, he could be a little lazy sometimes, but you still got to be careful. He's dangerous. And most importantly, he made weight, period. Tony, he made weight, period. It's it's just been crazy, man. You're fighting, you know, fighting people at restaurants and the hotel and backstage. It's like, look, man, you went from being a potential megastar and getting the winner of Leon and Kamaru to the UFC. I, I don't know what, man. He might be fighting at, uh, at, at your local high school. Uh, next time he fight, man, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but man, Hamza needs to get it on, man. He needs to get his head on straight, get, get, get focused, man. Yeah. You can have fun. You can talk crazy. You can go back and forth with people, but at the end of the day, you get paid to fight. You don't get paid to fight backstage though. You got to make weight and you got to hit that cage. And you know, this ain't a hating thing, but it's like, look, man, I just watch people go from supporting you and, and defending you to now Everybody is hoping that Nate literally just chokes you out in one round. That probably won't happen. If it does, that'll be crazy. But come on, man, this is your career. You you know, this is something you could be doing for a very long time. That could I'm sure it already has changed your life and your family's life. You got to take this serious, man. That's not a that's not a joke. You can't just be showing up. And now all of a sudden they got all these other fighters that they're trying to get as a backup because this fight might be off. I don't want to say that it is, but it is being reported that they they might be getting somebody else. And I'm seeing people say Tony versus Nate. That's terrible because it was potentially both of their last fights anyway. So it was already going to be like a sad night Saturday. We could have easily saw both of these guys lose. If we were lucky, we see one of them lose more than likely. We was going to see both of them lose. Now, we for sure will see one of them lose if they fight each other. And it's just, that's such a bad shake because I don't want to see Nate like lose on his last fight. And I don't want to see Tony get beat for what the upteenth time in a row. You know, I kind of want to see both of these guys go, you know, ride off into the sunset if they can. And I, th this is crazy, but 
it's like a train wreck. You can't look away from it. You got to watch it. So we'll see what happens next and I'll maybe report on something. But y'all let me know what you think. Give me your feedback. It's a lot of crazy stuff. If y'all are betting on these fights, I, I don't know what y'all are doing. I like I don't know what the, the, the plan is now. If you put money on Hamza already, because I'm sure the odds have changed like crazy uh, after what's gone on and what's transpired. And, and, and you know, it's crazy. Him missing weight. He didn't miss weight because of, well, we don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it, because he might be a bigger favorite because he'll be the bigger, stronger fighter. But then if they report that there was some type of injury or health thing, then how does that affect the odds? The, you know, and at the end of the day, an injured, slightly hurt Hamza, Hamza is still probably going to be able to beat Nate Diaz at this point. And I just realized Nate was 37, man. I'm still thinking Nate. I'm still thinking about the same dude from the Ultimate Fighter, but it's been a long time. It's been a, a long career, uh, a successful and interesting one as well. But, man, it's a lot going on. I'm going to be there Saturday night. Y'all, let me know what y'all thinking. We may have to do some shows. We might have to get on some Zoom calls tonight and just go over some stuff because it's a lot It's a lot going down. I'm sure they might announce a new fight or something here pretty soon. They got Dustin saying he can make weight. You got Moicano saying he can make weight. Bellal is saying he can make weight. It's it's several people, so hey, crazy.